There are such beings as vampires. Some of us have evidence that they exist. Even had we not the proof of our own unhappy experience, the teachings and the records of the past give proof enough for sane peoples. The Nosferatu do not die like the bee when he sting once. He is only stronger, and being stronger have yet more power to work evil. This vampire which is amongst us is of himself so strong in person as twenty men. He is of cunning more than mortal, for his cunning be the growth of ages. He have still the aids of necromancy, which is, as his etymology imply, the divination by the dead, and all the dead that he can come nigh are too for him at his command. He is brute, and more than brute, he is devil in callous, and the heart of him is not. He can, within his range, direct the elements, the storm, the fog, the thunder. He can command all the meaner things, the rat and the owl and the bat, the moth and the fox, and the wolf. He can grow and become small, and he can at times vanish and come unknown. How then are we to begin our strike to destroy him? How shall we find his where, and having found it, how can we destroy? My friends, this is much. It is a terrible task that we undertake, and there may be consequence to make the brave shudder. For if we fail in this, our fight, he must surely win. And then, where end we? Oh, life is nothings. I heed him not. But to fail here, it is not mere life or death. It is that we become as him that we henceforth become foul things of the night like him, without heart or conscience, preying on the bodies and the souls of those we love best. To us forever are the gates of heaven shut, for who shall open them to us again? We go on for all time, abhorred by all, a blot on the face of God's sunshine, an arrow in the side of him who died for man. But we are face to face with duty, and in such case must we shrink? <sighs> for me I say no, but then I am old, and life with his sunshine, his fair places, his song of birds, his music and love lie far behind. You others are young. Some have seen sorrow, but there are fair days yet in store. What say you? Dr. Van Helsing Welcome, my friends, to the Dracula Podcast. <laughs> Welcome once again to the Dracula Podcast, and a Happy New Year to everyone listening. I'm Frank Stella. And I'm Zach Hare. And uh, Zach, how are you doing in this new year? Oh, doing fine, doing fine. The uh, Northeast, your neck of the woods, has been in the national news, what with all the snowfall. How is, uh, how's it look outside? Big freaking deal. It's snow. I'm so I even created a meme about this on Facebook recently. Really? Okay, well, I guess the media has to make a big deal about something, otherwise... I mean, uh, I mean, it's not even... It wasn't even that bad. I mean, of course, every snowstorm bad wasn't even that freaking bad! All right, I I wouldn't know, I but I, I have I have experienced that before where people have blow, blown a snowstorm out of proportion. Well, you're from Chicago, so, so I'm sure we got a few bad ones there. For... Sure. Um, yeah, so I've, I've lived through that before, but I just... I didn't know what you guys were going through, but I've been hearing, you know, over the past several days about the... You know, northeast coast getting hit. So I mean, we've got a couple know. of mine, but I don't think we've got like the storm that would be. <laughs> it was more of a storm of media. Yeah, right. It reminds me of that scene from Vicar of Dibley. It's a British show where they just argue about which storm in the last fifty years was the great one. In Chicago, it's uh the the snowstorm of sixty two. I think around here in the northeast, it's like 76, seventy six. It was a seventy snowstorm. People still talk about it today. Well, we're uh, back at Dracula once again in 2014, and we've oh. only got, including this episode that we're going to cover tonight, just four episodes and left. And it still and hasn't so. been greenlit for a second season. And I think it might be one of those things where they hold out for a while, because um, what with there only being another three episodes uh, after tonight, you're probably not going to get a decision. Um, and the ratings have been shaky. Uh, ratings actually have been down again this week. Uh, from where they were last time to at uh, 3.8 million, they were down 2.9 million. That had a lot to do with Fox's college football special that was on That's probably uh, Friday night. They're probably so, going to wait to see how it rea- how the fans react to like downloads and that. Because I think even the networks are starting to see that the downloads and the viewings and streaming. That's how to gauge how much people like it. 
It's funny that uh, that's what actually saved The Office. They, the first season was just a six-episode trial, and uh, NBC was thinking about scrapping it because of poor ratings until they saw how well it was doing on iTunes, and that's what gave them the green light for season two. I think I think Dracula, is, it, it, it could last, at, if treated right, it could last a good three seasons. This kind of show, I don't think it's got a long-lasting thing, as much as I like it. How would you define treated right? Just have like give it a chance, you know. I think the it's got its core group of fans. I think a lot of people still don't know what to think of it because it's a whole new take on a on a very established genre. <sighs> yeah, it it's definitely new in a lot of ways. It's 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 current in a lot of ways too. I just well, we all know how I feel. Um, uh, I think you're probably not gonna get a definitive decision until after the final episode airs, kind of like how we had with Alcatraz where yeah. that, that huge cliffhanger. And then we're just our, you know, we're holding our breath the next, you know, week going, are they going to renew it? Are they not? And then, or Terra Nova did that. We, oh gosh. And finally we find out, Nope. No, nope, we're never, never going to find out why there was a freaking ship on. The, <laughs> oh, and I love Stephen Lang in that show, but we're getting to another show, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I'll bet you, they're probably going to wait until after the season airs in its entirety before we figure out uh, what the fate of the show is going to be. It's going to be interesting to see how they leave that final episode. Are they going to leave us with a huge cliffhanger? Are they going to kind of make it feel like it could end there comfortably? We'll have to see. We've got three more episodes to go. This past episode was called um, Servant of Two Masters. And um, why do you think they call it that, Zach? Well, I'm guessing one of them is, of course, his slave to his thirst. I'm not sure what the sec his second master would be, though. I think it might have been the conflict that he was feeling between his maybe his vampirism and and the needs that he had as a vampire and some of his other just agendas in life, whether they're romantic or uh, professional. Indeed, it, because there was a, there was a, he was having a huge struggle this whole episode between. I really need blood. I'm trying to deny myself. I'm trying to deny it to Van Helsing, but it's coming through. And so it, it, it seemed like, and it, I'm not sure if maybe they were kind of going for that biblical reference, I think, in Deuteronomy where it says you can't serve two masters. That might have been kind of what they were going for with this to say, like, look, you've got to choose one or the other. You can't. Or maybe he feels like he can't be both a vampire and an upstanding individual. There was a lot going on this episode. I was a little bit disappointed because this episode felt to me like the least amount of actual <laughs> reason for why I would be interested in this show. And I understand they're not going by the book, but I just felt like at least give me good old fashioned blood and good versus evil. I mean, the the huntsmen weren't like mentioned at all. There, there was none of that. Uh, Lady Jane didn't do anything other than give Lucy, lesbian Lucy, a lesson in seduction and and of course her <laughs> weekly uh bed date with grayson and I, it's just like there's so much sex going on there's so much politics going on it's like where's just the good old fashioned good versus evil that i want to well, see well it looks like from the previews we're gonna get back into that i hope so but i think i just that, i think that's, i was frustrated with this episode be because i just felt like iffy about yeah, and I mean, part of that has to do with com competing programs on other networks, but uh, as far as the numbers go, but I just, I was a little bit frustrated with this episode because there was just so much junk mm. and not enough of, you know, what really a vampire story is all about. And interestingly, you have Van Helsing, everything's so twisted when you compare it with the book, but Van Helsing is not only, you know, just doing his thing and teaming up with Dracula, but he's actually pushing him to feed because he knows he, as a vampire, he needs it and saying, dude, I mean, get out there and get some blood. And it's just, it, to, to, in my brain, who of course is used to Van Helsing being the leader of the protagonists, I'm just like, this is so perverted. So what was your take on the episode as a whole? For the most part, I like this episode, but I can see what some people might have a problem with. It's like moving chess pieces. I like a lot of things in this thing will probably have an impact on later episodes. Okay. And how do you see them playing out? Well, that remains to be seen. Like, I still have no idea what they're going from with the whole tr seduction training with Lucy. I don't you understand know, I, that at all. I don't. I don't think that that actually feeds into anyone's agenda. I think that's just something that the writers and producers forced into this just to make it. Current. It feels like because it's just 
it's why like you and you can't have someone like like the lady who every move she makes is calculated and well chosen you've got to have a reason she's why lady jane is doing it but i mean what is any i mean anything she's not doing huntsman wise is all because she's just like super sensual and just is she just I mean, that's her thing, you know, being in bed with Grayson and always, you know, just being seductive like that. And now she's got, like, little Miss Virgin Lucy who she can, like, mentor in the ways of lesbian seduction. And she's all for it. And it's just, I think that's just, that's all the motivation within within the story that I think there is. But, again, it, it does feel forced when you look at it objectively. Yeah. Oh, it's, I, I will mention it's kind of fun. Like, our fans know I live tweet during the show, and Victoria Smurf was tweeting about the kiss. She's like, "I got the kiss that it Kate, with Katie McGrath." <laughs> and as a purely guy thing, it was a pretty hot scene. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> also as a guy, I'd like to point out that not all guys are the same. <laughs> In that, I felt kind of weird by it. Doesn't really do it for me, if you will. <laughs> But um, but that's Dracula in the 21st century, folks. So what did we think about the demonstration and where that was headed before it got nixed there at the end? I mean, did was that going to be the final clincher or was that just another step in the uh, race, the energy race? Well, the thing is... Because it, it, like, it seemed like they were desperate. It seemed like a desperation move to shut it down. Well, it's because they know if, if, if he does renewable energy, it just screws. But something I'm, it makes me think of that we haven't really addressed yet is where the heck Dracula got his knowledge about it from. You know, I got the sense that he... You know, he he's not a scientist. I mean, he's a... CEO, he's a businessman. I'm sure he has a whole science team. Uh, I mean, he acquired. He, I'm sure he hired people. He acquired patents. He acquired technology, and he hired people. You know, he's a, he's a business owner. You know, let me put it to it in radio terms. The owner of a radio station probably doesn't know everything about the technology uh, and engineering of running a radio station. Does that make any sense? Yeah, I get what so, you're yeah, I get what you're I just – I'm hoping for a, a, an episode where we find out where he first discovered it, like how he came across it and all that stuff. Yeah, and I mean he might not have discovered it in the sense that he, you know, produced it in a lab yeah. himself. But he might have – you know, somebody might have – he might have heard of something somewhere. And I mean he's been around, you know, plenty of time to be hearing about things and maybe he's acquiring things as technology progresses and he's, you know – making money off of them and finally things are kind of coming together where the technology is up and presenting itself and he's keeps acquiring it and kind of building an empire out of it. Uh, I would imagine that's how he's come across things little by little. And, you know, he wants to buy people's patents. He wants to acquire this or that. And I think little by little, he's, he's building something that's turning into a um, energy empire. So I, I don't think it's something that he just, you know, yeah, discovered I, one day. Yeah, I just, I'm, I'm hoping for an episode where we f- learn more about it. Maybe. Uh, I don't think, I think that m- that might just be like a side note, though. I don't know if it's actually going to lead to the story because um, I feel like if it, if it, if it flashed back to something like that or explained it, I feel like there would have to be a need for them to even bring that up because I don't, I'm not sure if that's a question that everyone is on their mind as far as, the progression of the story is concerned. One thing I find interesting is like they they say they have the whole thing about General Shaw, like oh we framed an innocent man, but we know General mm-hmm. Shaw is in with the order, so he's not completely innocent. Yeah, and I mean innocence is kind of a funny word. I don't think either. I mean nobody's truly innocent, uh, and I mean as as Grayson put it, you know it's just another fallen fighter in the energy battle or whatever he called it. And it's just like I don't think. I, don't, I mean, you know, Dracula, Grayson keeps pointing out the corruption in the Order's business. But, I mean, you know, he's kind of corrupt himself. He's not without his secrets and without his uh, blemishes and, you know, ethical dilemmas here and there. So, I mean, both both sides of this really are not free of corruption or greed or, you know, putting their uh, putting their own agendas before, I guess, ethics or morality or whatever. So... 
Um, yeah, and and you saw Harker get upset with Grayson saying, you know, uh, because when he found out that those, I guess that whoever Shaw is and about the bribes was just a, a hoax or some kind of forged evidence. So he said, I'll expose you and goes, you know, what are you going to expose exactly? So making it look like it was Jonathan who was doing the, the setup in the first place. But that was kind of weird. Where do we think we're headed with Grayson and Mina? It looks more and more like Mina is open to his semi advances. I'm actually, I like that. I can't wait to see what, because I think they were making Mina a little too like doe eyed innocent. You know what I mean? Well, that's really the only way that these kinds of things can happen. I know. I mean, it's, just... it's, the, it's the same thing with Phantom of the Opera and why Christine kept going back oh, and forth. Oh, gosh. Don't even get me started on that. <laughs> All right. Well, that's basically what you have to do. You have to – female in that position has to be kind of vulnerable but also innocent and or ignorant enough to kind of lose interest in who she should be loyal to. And, you know, turn to the antagonist. <laughs> well, it's just, a, it's like last last episode when um, Lucy finally admits her feelings for her. Her, I, I thought her reaction was kind of odd. You thought Mina's reaction was odd? Yeah, because well, she, she brought up Jonathan. I'm like, what the heck does that have to do with Jonathan? I would imagine she's referring to her, you know, faithfulness to her fiancé. I guess. I don't know. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> I kissed a girl and I liked it, but my boyfriend don't mind it. <laughs> really? Uh, really? Are we gonna That's hear? Funny. Are we gonna hear you roar? <laughs> if you hear me roar, my listeners might be the ones that got away. Oh, jeez. <laughs> hey, I'm a radio guy. I can do this all night. If the listeners would like us to change co-hosts, please write in at DraculaPodcast <laughs> at gmail dot com on Twitter. <laughs> or if you'd like to hear more of this host, request a copy. You can hear the unedited version. I don't uh, think anyone wants the unedited version. We'll burn you a CD. There, I mean, there's a lot to talk about if you we're really interested in the in the fluff and the drama and the politics of it. What else? What else do you want to bring up? Because I feel like how about as the a, order you know, trying to recruit Harker. Okay, there's something of where there's kind of like a battle for Jonathan's loyalty, which is kind of funny because. Um, I mean, just not that long ago, he was kind of a nobody. I mean, he was a journalist, which I guess isn't completely a nobody, but I mean, he, you know, there's plenty of journalists to go around, and I guess Grayson picked up on that, and of course, you know, him and his whole crush on Mina probably had something to do with that. Um, wanted to keep her kind of close, but not too close uh, or something, but now the order, I, I, I guess Jonathan is kind of the... I'm not sure what's the phrase I'm looking for. He's kind of the man in the middle, or he's kind of the, if you want to talk about a chessboard, he's kind of one of those pieces that you want to get. So um, the order now, yeah, making a move on him. I just um, hope they don't do something like he helps the order well for too long just because he thinks Mina slept around with Alexander because that's, that's something that belongs in the CW, you know what I'm saying? I don't think he suspects her of that. Well, no, it's next episode. If you watch the preview, it says, I know about you and Grayson. Really? I didn't see that. Yeah. See, I, watched, I watched it on Hulu again. I, I got to stop doing that because I'm missing things. He says, I know about you and Grayson. Yeah, another thing from the preview is a scene where um, Lady Wetley has a, va- a lady, a really hot, actually, Lady Vampire, says, who calls you here? And she actually says, Dracula. <laughs> so that, I, I wonder, I mean, I, it'd be really funny if they realized that Dracula is around, but of course, they no longer think that Grayson's the vampire, so they could think Dracula's back, but they don't even suspect Grayson. See, I don't know if, I'm wondering if maybe they still kind of suspect him, but they're kind of confused in their suspicion, if you will. How about that scene where uh, Grayson, like, licks that blood off of Jane's finger? I know. I was like, are you kidding me? Really? I was like, oh, wow. And, I mean, she's she's been all over that suspicion, too. So uh, you have to kind of wonder what was going on in her mind. <laughs> One of the defining moments of the show is what she, is for me, I don't know if it's going to happen this season, is what's going to happen when she realizes I I, I, I want to see what she does. Sleeping with the enemy. I mean, she's. I mean, because she can't. It's not like she can. Go, oh, you are a vampire. I'm gonna go to my people. Because if if it turns out he is a vampire, they're gonna kill her. 
She's gonna have to skip town regardless. Yeah, so I, I mean, it's gonna be a lot of. It should be interesting. I, I think what they'll do is she'll come back and she'll be both their enemies. You want to know what I think's gonna happen? Well, what? she's gonna become a vampire. I could see that. If I were writing this show and if I were, I'd shoot myself. That's what I would do. Just, you're so negative. <laughs> Yeah, I'm negative. I'm positive about what matters, though. I thought you were going to say I'm positive about being negative. I'm positive about I'm negative. <laughs> and you seem kind of neutral. I think that's a good place to be when you're doing a podcast. I don't. I, I like to be opinionated. No, Even if there's something I don't me. like, I will say I don't like it. Like, I don't like Lady Weatherby and the, the story with Lucy. I think it's, it's, it's serving no purpose except to show two women making out. <laughs> <laughs> and as much as I enjoy that, that's not a reason – I don't like having that just for the sole reason of being in the show. So you're not completely neutral. This is what I'm well, – I can I, – I'm switching. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm rotating you're, neutral. You're swinging. You, you're swinging a different way. Mm. Story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I think that's going to about wrap it up for this week. Um, tell me – once again, what you saw in the preview for next week because that sounded really okay, interesting. It, it looks like it looks like we're gonna get more in the van. Like Lucy's gonna go more after John, and like he's he's confronting me to say, "Oh, I know what you did." Blah 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 blah. And I, I just kinda... and it, did it look like did it show like a scene of her with Grayson? Did they dance? Did they kiss? Did they? I don't they think they bed? showed what, what that. Like? like I said, I've only seen the preview once. But like I said, the thing that I'm interested about is lady weatherby is confronting a vampire a lady vampire go who called you here and she says dracula so and dracula th- so it looks like dracula is calling vampires to london it looks well they well they have said that having a powerful vampire draws them to the huh. city i i, I just want i can't wait to see yeah this episode just it seemed like this as, i didn't hate it but there wasn't much to it hmm I didn't think so either, uh, really, as far as what carried the story. And again, I, you know me and my interests. I'm interested in, you know, good versus evil, as I like to make a comparison, rebels versus empire. That's what I'm into. And so if it's not that, then I don't know what no, to do. No, it's interesting that Lord Davenport now has the cryptic, but he thinks that's a picture of Mina. But should, shouldn't he figure out really quickly that that picture was painted hundreds of years ago? Yeah, and I don't know. All right, well, Come to Die is next episode, and it's going to be on uh, this Friday on NBC. Shameless plug. Haha. And well, if we're going to do Shameless Plug, be sure to check out all the other great podcasts at Southgate Media. <laughs> SouthgateMediaGroup.com. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, and what other podcasts are you involved with, uh, Zach? I'm involved with the Headless Podcast, which is Sleepy Hollow Podcast, the Baker Street Podcast, the all-encompassing Sherlock Holmes podcast, and I'll be probably involved with a Geek Cage match eventually. Well, Zach, I hope one day you find a life. (laughs) So do I, Frank. So do I. (laughs) And uh, if uh, you would like to comment on anything Dracula or Dracula podcast related, we'd love to hear from you. You can email us at what is it? Dracula podcast at gmail.com. We're also on Facebook, the Dracula podcast with Frank Stella and uh, not to discount Zachary Hare, my fearless partner. It's just what the name is on Facebook. Also we're on Twitter at Dracula podcast. So we Woo! hope to uh, see you online and uh, get some more people involved in social media. I think we have like 12 likes on Facebook and I know for a fact there's more people listening to us than that. So I don't know why you haven't liked us on Facebook, but we would love to hear from you. So please do that. And, uh, Zach, anything else? Any final words? Like I said, this episode didn't really have – that's all I have to say about this episode. Yeah, I think we were kind of scrounging for things. We really were. Uh, but, you know, we'd love to, again, just to plug for social media, if you want to talk about more on this episode, if there's anything that we didn't cover that you want to mention, or just give us another thing to bring up or a question, whatever it may be, just find us online. And we'll be glad to bring up your comment next week in the podcast or just chat with you on the Facebook or Twitter. So go ahead and do that. And uh, the Dracula podcast is a production of the Southgate Media Group. Until next week, I'm Frank Stella. And I'm Zach Hare. Until next week, listen to the children of the night. What music they make. Ha ha ha.